Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the last used row, cell, or column in a worksheet. And this is part two in a video series. In the first part, I talked about the range.in method, and this time we're going to talk about the range.find method. And basically, we use the range.find method when our data has any blanks in it, and we don't have a well-formed or structured data set like this. So here I have an example of a worksheet where we might want to use the range.find method to find the last non-blank row or non-blank column. Because here we could see uh, we're looking for, for, and for the rows, we're looking for row 7 here. That would be our last non-blank row. And for columns, we're looking for column E here. That would be our last non-blank column or column that contains a cell that's not blank. So the range.find method works very similar to the find uh, window in Excel. If you hit control F on the keyboard, that'll bring up this find window and there's all these options here. And that's exactly what the range.find method does as well. So let's get into it and see what it looks like. So if you've ever seen this code here, this is the range.find method. And it has a lot of arguments and it's honestly pretty scary looking. The first time you see it, you might be kind of thinking, nah, I'm gonna try something else because this looks way too complicated. And there are a lot of arguments here. I think it has a total of nine arguments. Uh, most of those arguments are optional, but there are a lot to learn here. But I'll gonna go th walk through this code and uh, explain exactly what it does. So hopefully it'll be a little more useful to you. So again, there's nine arguments, I believe, in total. If I hit Control-I here, that'll bring up the info, and we can see the, f uh, the find method here with the argument, the what argument is the only required argument, and then all the rest of these in brackets are optional arguments. And that's basically what we have listed out here in the code below. I just have line breaks. Uh, these underscore characters are line breaks. So that makes it a little easier to read. But basically from the open parentheses here all the way down to the closed parentheses, this is the find argument. Or I'm sorry, the find method with all its arguments. So let me go ahead and walk you through exactly what this thing's doing. So first of all, we're just uh, using this uh, variable here, L row, to basically declare, we're declaring the variable and then we're gonna set L row to the last row that range.find or the find method finds for us here. So right here, we're just re using the cells property to reference all the cells in the worksheet, in the active worksheet. So this is basically gonna look or find, uh, do a find on all the cells in the worksheet. And then we're gonna specify what we wanna find. In this case, we wanna find a non-blank cell. So we're gonna use this asterisk character, and that's basically a wild card that's gonna find anything. So it's just kind of an open statement. If you find anything in the cell at all, just stop there and return that cell. So that's what that's gonna do. The after argument is basically saying we're going to start the search after, in this case, cell A1. So this, and this is important because the start, the search actually starts after A1. It doesn't start in A1. So range.find is not going to start looking in A1. It's going to look in the cell after that. And the cell after that will depend on which direction we're going to go in. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But now we're going to look at just part of the cell, any part of the cell. This particular argument isn't too important for this case because we're already specifying a wild card here. Then we're going to look in, and this is go we're going to look in formulas. So the options here are either looking in formulas or looking in values, which is the same option you get in the find window in Excel. And basically here we want to look in formulas. And this is important because if you have a formula that's returning a blank, so if you have like an if statement that's returning a blank, then you'll want to look in that formula and find that formula as a non-blank. Because you typically, when you're finding the last non-blank, you don't want to delete a row or a column that has a, non, that has a blank cell in there that's being returned by a formula. So specifying formulas here, the, the search will actually look in the cells. If they contain a formula, then it's going to consider that a non-blank. So just leave that as formulas. The next is the order. And this is also important because here we're going to search by rows. And the options here are either by rows or by columns. Now when we're finding the last row, we want to search by rows. And then we're basically going to search up every single row until we find a non-blank. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. The direction we're going to search previous. So this means that we're going to basically start in cell A1 and go backwards. So I have a diagram here that explains this a little better. Basically, this is this will hopefully help you understand this a little better. This also ex kind of explains what the range shot find method's doing. So when I, when I said we're going to start in the first cell, we're going to start in A1, and then we're going to go in the previous direction, which means in this case, when we go in the previous direction from A1, it's going to go all the way to the very last 
cell on the worksheet down here and then start its search. So it's kind of confusing at first, but hopefully this diagram will help you visualize it a little better. So basically what we're doing is, again, starting A1, going all the way down to the last cell in the worksheet, and then we're going to start our search going backwards because uh, we're going in the previous direction and we're going by rows. So basically it's going to start in this last cell and go to right to left until it finds a non-blank. And it's just going to keep going up every single row in the worksheet until it finds a non-blank. In this case here, it's going to stop. The search is going to stop when it hits this cell here in D11 because there's a value in there. It's not blank. So it's going to stop its search right there and return that row number for us. So this is what makes the range.find method so versatile because you can basically have blanks in your last row and you don't necessarily need to worry about what column those blanks are in because range.find is going to stop whenever it finds any cell that has a value or a formula in that last row. So I'm going to jump back over to our find sheet here with our example and let's go ahead and test this out. So Alt F11 is going to jump me back into the VB editor and now I'm just going to go ahead and run this code and we'll see that it's found, it's basically going to return a message box with the last row number, row 7 here and that's exactly where our last row is here, row 7. And again, it just started in the very last cell in the worksheet and worked its way up from right to left until it found right here the last or that first non-blank cell in the search and stopped right there. So there is potential for errors with range.find, and I just want to explain those real quick. So I'm going to jump back over to Excel. I'm just going to enter a blank worksheet here, Shift F11, and then I'll hit Alt F11 and jump back into the VB editor. So now if I was to run this code on a blank worksheet, I'll just go ahead and run it, and we get an error here because basically there's nothing for the range.find method to find. Every cell in the worksheet's blank. It can't find anything, so it's basically returning an error. So we can handle this error. I'm just going to stop here with an on air resume next statement. So up above your range.find uh, line of code, you want to put on air resume next. And that's basically just going to bypass the air. So on air resume next, if you haven't used this before or if you've seen it and you're not exactly sure what it means, it's kind of a blanket air on air resume next is kind of a, just a blanket air handling statement so now it's basically saying if it, any errors are hit in any lines of code in this procedure below it's just going to skip those so in order to kind of wrap this error statement because we don't necessarily if we have more code down below this we don't necessarily want to skip that if we hit an error we want to handle those errors and figure out what they are so you also see this line of code a lot on air go to Oops, go to zero. And this basically means that we're resetting the error handling. So if we here we're going to say if you hit any errors, just skip them. And then down here we're going to say now reset that. And we're basically, if we hit an error, we're going to stop again. So we're not, we don't have any error handling going on below this. And we need to handle any potential errors with its own error handling code. So now when we run this code on this blank sheet here, again, we have this blank worksheet in the background. We run this code. It's basically going to return the last row is zero uh, because we, it didn't find any rows that were blank, or I'm sorry, that contained any non-blanks. Okay, so so far we just looked at using the last row, but we can also use uh, this range.find method to find the last column as well. So down here I have an example of the column, finding the column. The only difference here is the search order. So right here we're specifying the search order by columns. When we're finding a row, we uh, specify the search order by rows. So this basically means we're going to go uh, up each column. So we're going to, again, still start in that last cell in the worksheet and go up each column from right to left left until we find a value, a non-blank value, and then stop in that particular column. So that'll allow us to find the last non-blank column. So if I go to my example sheet here again, we'll just run this and I'll explain it. So I'm just going to run this code here, F5 on the keyboard. And then basically now we're saying the, it's returned the last column is column 5, which would be column E here. So it's basically started way over on the end of the worksheet here and gone up and basically up every single column until it finds a non-blank. In this case, it would have stopped here in cell E4, which would be column 5 right there. 
Now, another really important thing to know with this uh, range.find method is even though all these arguments are optional, or as, if you remember I said these arguments in brackets here are optional, you do want to specify these when you're doing uh, range.find because basically Excel will remember whichever uh, whatever argument you set, whatever value you set this as, uh, whether you're doing it in VBA or in the find window itself, Excel remembers that as it's basically its default when it runs range.find. So if you have set this, instead of going by columns here, this is the same as the argument, you could set it by rows. If you don't specify this in your range.find arguments, then Excel's just going to automatically assume that you want to search by rows, even though you might want to search by columns, and use that. So it's a good idea to reference or specify all these arguments uh, so you don't have to worry about that and don't have to worry about the user potentially changing it when they use the find window. Okay, so now that you have an understanding of how this thing works, you might be thinking, well, how am I going to remember how to type that every time? And the good news is you don't necessarily have to. Uh, you can use a function. So down here I have this function, which is basically one I've modified from an example that Ron De Bruin has on his site. I'll put a link up there. It's a great one to use. So basically this function uh, just allows you to specify whether or not you want to return the last row, column, or cell. And in this case, I've modified it to also deter, uh, you can also tell it which sheet and what range you want to search for. And then basically, it's going to do all these uh, range.find methods for you, whichever ones you need, and then return the last row, column, or cell. So then you can just copy and paste this into any project, any VBA project you're working on, and then reference this function with just one line of code. So basically this procedure here just uses, just calls the find last method. In this case, I'm uh, specifying three as the, uh, as the argument, so it's going to return the last cell. And if I run this F5, you'll see there that it just returns the last cell in the sheet as E7. And even though E7 is blank, this is still telling us that that would basically be the intersection of the last used row and column because we're using row 7 and column E. So again, you can just basically copy and paste this into any VBA project, and then you don't have to uh, type out all of these range.find methods. The other way to do it is just, just use the macro recorder. So if I go back here and I just uh, hit the record macro button here, we'll just record a new macro, and I'm just going to hit Control F on the keyboard for the find, and then I'll just uh, hit the find next button and then close this. Now, if I go Alt F11 and I go back into my uh, project here, you'll see that the macro recorder has recorded all of the, um, basically all the arguments for the range.find method here. So now you don't have to type them. They're all here for you. So that's another way to quickly get all this code without having to type it. Either copy and paste it or just use the macro recorder real quick and you'll get all the code in just a few seconds. Okay, so that's the range.find method in a nutshell. Of course, there's more to it. You can also specify uh, which range you want to look in, which sheet you want to look in, and you can modify the code to do that. But hopefully that helped you understand kind of the basics of how it works and how you can use it to your advantage when your uh, sheet contains blanks. So that's definitely my preferred method for finding the last non-blank cell, row, or column is using that range.find because of its versatility. And it's much easier to use once you understand how it works. So please feel free to leave a comment below with any questions. And also don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter where you get more tips and tricks and videos like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.